Lauren, uh, bring us up to speed. What is the latest? The latest is I am trying to figure out what happened. It's 4 p.m., which was the deadline for Eddie Lampert and, and anyone else who wanted to buy Sears to submit their bid. Um, his bid, if he did do one, will be public, but there might be a delay in that becoming public. So per my conversations with sources all day, he had been working very hard all day to get that bid done. But I still don't know if he lined up all the financing and formally submitted his bid. But hopefully I will so, soon. So, Lauren, that would be if he made a bid. Is it possible uh, or likely that anybody else could make a bid? And, and if so, would they also have to make it public? Uh, great question. So there's a couple components to it. There's a number of other parties who are bidding, but they are bidding for other things. Basically, they're liquidators who are bidding to buy it and then break it up in pieces and sell it. So if a liquidator buys Sears, it essentially goes away. It's possible, though very unlikely, there is some sort of dark horse who has been very secretly this whole time been lining up his own, his or her own financing and trying to buy Sears. But that's uh, very unlikely. But if it were to be the case, no, that one would not have to be public. Jeff Sonnenfeld, is Sears salvageable? Well, you'd think I should yield the turf to Lauren as our retail expert, but I actually grew up in the Schmata business. My father was a men's clothing merchant. This is an awful, I'm colorblind, by the way. I couldn't match up anything myself. But it's, it's really a, a very, very difficult business. You had interviewed Doug McMillan a month ago, and we took a look at the leading retailers or who they were in the, the mid-1950s uh, and who they are today. And it's pretty scary just who's gone. The, the Montgomery Wards and the EJ Corvettes and S. Klein and, of course, Woolworths and so many others that disappeared. It's tough space, but they could have survived. It isn't just because they were old. Uh, Brooks Brothers is 200 years old. Uh, the, you could take a look at uh, Macy's is about, I think, about 160 years old. That They've been able to refurbish themselves just the way IBM and UPS and 3M and other companies have. Just because they had a long legacy doesn't mean they had to be suffocated by their legacy. There were some terrible mistakes that happened before Eddie bought in. In 1993-94, uh, in when they actually shut down the catalog business, was a huge mistake. That's the exact year, the exact time Amazon was founded. They had that distribution model of the catalog business, and it was a shame. As they, they moved into stores, it was the smart thing to do in the 1920s, into suburban stores, but they should have kept catalogs. They're the ones who showed us how scale works. They also showed us how you can actually not cannibalize by making the mail and what will mm -hmm. become online work together with retail. Unfortunately, Eddie bought into this, uh, and I, I be careful what I say because he is an old friend, he's a Yale alum, and he was classmate of Steve Mnuchin back at Yale, is that uh, <laughs> they made some terrible mistakes. They were cutting advertising. They weren't focused on the merchandising. I, he did put a lot of money and a lot of resources into online, but they sadly, they lost their way. I believe Eddie Lampert may have had more CEOs since he was, and he was the longest running CEO under his reign, CEOs since he controlled Sears since its very founding 132 years ago. Je Jeff, if very someone volatile did, leadership. if he or someone else did, uh, did make a move for it, what would be your number one piece of advice? How could they try and salvage what's left? It's hard to salvage right now. It's a very complicated thing. I think he owns around 31% of Sears, and he had even more of a stake of Kmart when he sold it, when he, when he combined them, which was an Ill, his big ill-fated move, was trying to put those two pieces together. Uh, but I think uh, ESL, his, his securities company, uh, his hedge fund, has about another 15%. So you have that ownership on one side, but he's also on the other side of the table. This company, I think, is worth around $7 billion in assets and $11 billion in liabilities, a little more than $11 billion in liabilities, a little less than that in assets. Is So is it bankrupt? Well, certainly technically you would say it would be, but who owns a lot of that debt? It's him. He owns $2.6 billion of the debt. And some people suggest he's been possibly doing this, handling this as a slow liquidation to, to seize a lot of real estate assets anyway. So whether or not he truly was inspired as a retailer, I don't know. It, it really takes a good yeah. merchant to run a retail operation. He never had one there.